Hi, welcome. Welcome to the exciting world of behaviors. I am Srinidhi SK. And this is Manu Varki. We talk about behaviors. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not just behaviors. If you notice people, people have certain patterns. Mm. You know, at times they behave in a particular way. Right. In the given situation. Right. Probably in the similar but in a different situation, they behave differently. Have mm. you noticed it? Yeah, yeah. I Probably I do that all the time. You may do that uh, as well. Unknowingly? Or knowingly. Yes. Right. So unintentionally? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or with full consciousness? Absolutely, absolutely. So now behavior pattern mm-hmm. can be analyzed. Okay. Each of the individuals, you and me and everybody else in this world, have certain patterns in their respective behaviors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's what this session is all about. Oh, wonderful. That sounds very interesting. And when you use the word pattern, you're suggesting that these um, these behaviors are, are sort of molded, perhaps over time, repeated over time. And by carefully observing, we can find out what these patterns are. Absolutely. Right? It consolidates. It right. becomes a kind of a habit. Right. right. And then in a given situation or if a similar situation were to recur again, mm-hmm. Uh, then the same pattern is you're going to see it. Super. Right. The same person mm. can have a same pattern in other situations right. or or probably a totally a different pattern. Totally depends on the situation. Uh, situation. Right. Okay. Right. Or great. when we say situational, it's also people. Great, great. Right. Great. When I'm interacting with my mm-hmm. father, mm-hmm. the way I interact mm-hmm. can be very different from the way I interact with probably my with my wife or with my son or right, right, absolutely. You know, things like that. Yeah, you know? Right, right. He could also, um, the environment could also play a role on this. So it's not just specific to the person. Um, I, in, a, in, a, in a different situation, with perhaps at work, if, when I'm in the office or when I'm at home, uh, my behaviors could also vary. Could be certainly, different. certainly. Right. So now this is a huge um, you know awareness building mm-hmm. exercise mm-hmm. so it's a huge you know at the end of the session as we go along discussing behavior patterns there's going to be a huge self awareness and also helps you the way your uh, personality trait right or you know sometimes we call it the leadership traits that right. you are going to display is all based on this right 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 uh, can you think of one great scientist who's actually behind uh, studying behavior, understanding behavior. Does any name come to you? Let's see. It's a test for you. Well, when, when you talk about the subject of behavior, yes. right? Um, one stalwart comes to mind. B. Mm. F. Skinner. Right? B. F. Skinner. Absolutely. B. F. stands for? Boris Frederick Skinner. Wonderful. Right? Wonderful. Uh, um, he, was, he was a behaviorist and who pioneered uh, a lot of work, a lot of study on how behaviors come about are formed within people, and he had uh, new. He had a lot of depth into yes. his findings, and that's uh, based on you know today's discussion is going to be based a lot on his research. He, and you know, his if I remember, this P. F. Skinner mm-hmm. is a radical behaviorist. Absolutely, He's very radical in his thoughts. Right, 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 and he propounded the the theory of uh, operant conditioning. You know, when you say operant conditioning, you're saying the idea that behavior is determined mm-hmm, mm-hmm. by its consequences. Right. Correct. My behavior is right. based on the consequences, right. whether it is a reinforcement or a punishment. A reward or a punishment. It's, yes. Uh, both of these influence whether a behavior is developed within me and sticks. Um, yeah, absolutely. Whether it is uh, uh, more or less likely that the behavior will occur again. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So he was one of the, you know, very pioneering uh, psychologists in America. Right. Those days. Yeah? Right. Right. B.F. Skinner, even today, very highly regarded mm-hmm. and then highly referred to in the field of... Uh, behavioral studies. Behavioral studies right. across Absolutely. the world. Absolutely. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, now, you know, you gave me a good answer. I want to ask you one more question. Uh, what is you say B. F. Skinner? What is his belief? B. F. Skinner Skinner believed that um, the environment was solely responsible for behaviors that people picked up, right? And it was solely influences personality and the development of the individual, right? So the environment had every role to play. Absolutely. See, in fact, 
uh, we had uh, Carl Gustav Jung right. who spoke about genetics and behavior and mm-hmm. nature right but whereas uh, Skinner is a person completely, on, completely the, on the other side on, on the environment okay how the situations influence your behavior absolutely, right absolutely yeah so now Uh, let's talk a little more about because we use the word apparent condition right right correct so uh, can you you know uh, share you know what is this apparent condition so when when we when we talk about apparent conditioning uh, conditioning we we understand that behavior as as we see it as an action is often followed by a consequence i do something and a consequence happens right right and the nature of the consequence yes modifies the organisms tendency to repeat that particular behavior in the future yeah right so for example right if um, as a child um i touched a hot stove yes okay that's the action yeah. right and you withdraw i know withdraw it burns my hand that's the consequence Correct. right now because that consequence caused me pain right uh, the likelihood of me repeating that yes. is now influenced by my rem- my memory of experience, experience my experience yeah. right yes. so now that conce- that consequence is influencing the likelihood of me repeating so next time you'll be more careful before you touch it hopefully right, right. absolutely i think right. you said it so now that actually gives us uh, you know what uh, you skinner was talking about right. the abc principle absolutely absolutely so a stands for antecedent so you that means you the behavior the the the, the uh, um the the situation that comes before my behavior beautiful right so the antecedent leads to a behavior right 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 and the behavior leads to the see the consequences absolutely right so it is the abc triangle yeah. so there is an antecedent there is a behavior there is a consequences Consequence. so just remember right the antecedent uh influences you to act in a certain way right you act in a certain way that's the that's the behavior that's the b and which is followed by a consequence antecedents of the new behavior mm-hmm. include the consequences of the previous behavior mm. the an- antecedent of the new behavior yes could include the consequence of the previous behavior for example to make it to make, make it easy to understand the burning of my hand yes becomes an antecedent for me the next time i think of touching a hot plate or when i see a, a tawa on the stove or a plate on the stove that's that's how it's going to work so a b c antecedent behavior consequence absolutely absolutely right so yeah before we go further mm. i must tell you those of you who are very interested in reading more about b f skinner and his excellent contribution he's uh, contributed some tremendous work you know a publication that comes to my mind are verbal behavior right 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 or the walden 2 walden 2 yes yeah. it's a very important uh, yeah. you know book that he wrote and uh, the behavior of organisms he wrote actually an experimental analysis mm. completely mm. on the behavior of organisms mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right and, and the f- beyond freedom and dignity was another one of his works. yes so these are some wonderful contributions those of you interested to know more about bf skinner please go ahead verbal behavior walled into beyond freedom and dignity and the behavior of organisms and experimental analysis right 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 so now we have been talking about behavior mm-hmm. human behavior uh, you know can change you know i've noticed you know the way people behave at work mm-hmm. when they go outside mm-hmm. you know either to a friend's place or to their own home off work right. in other words is very different not all of them right some of them it's very glaring right some of them it's you know here and there mm-hmm. but some of them you know quite obvious quite obvious right so there's a difference between at work when i'm working at the office and yeah. when i'm back at home there's yeah. a clear depends on be the people are different the environment is different the situations e- are the different the expectations are different absolutely of you right absolutely right. the role that you're playing are different absolutely so now let's look at this mm. you know uh, based on what bf skinner said human behavior is actually a collection on of behaviors mm-hmm. exhibited by human beings mm-hmm. individuals right. people right? right and it is influenced by many factors absolutely right. just to give a sample of what all can influence one's mind yeah yeah uh, you, you can could think of you could, you could have uh, you know just being persuaded by somebody persuasion persuasion right yes. it could be it also is about attitude absolutely by internal way of thinking you you know what what's happening in my mind my world view absolutely yes. of course you know uh, coercion to be forced by somebody 
But your please. father and mother can force you as authority yeah, yeah. because your boss, boss can could force you. you. Right. I understand your situation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Right. Which triggers uh, emotions <laughs> within the person. Absolutely. So any high emotional state could also trigger or influence actions. Right. Yeah. There's also something called hypnosis. Mm. Mm. I can hypnotize myself. Self-hypnosis. Self-hypnosis. Or I can hypnotize others because if I keep on telling somebody that you're good, you're good, mm. you're good, you're good. You know, initially the person may not believe, but over a period of time he can start believing. There's that a subconscious influence. influence. So I can influence people. What I, example I gave you was a positive one, right. but also a negatively. Yeah. So hypnosis is another communication happens probably mm. even without people realizing Absolutely. that they are doing it. Right. Yeah. Right. So well, parents do that, you know, especially when parents keep scolding mm. or boss keeps scolding or teachers, you're fit for nothing, yeah, you're good, you're good for nothing, etc, etc, etc. Even though intention may be good, but what is happening is person starts believing mm-hmm. that he's really no good. And once he reaches that state, that is where B.F. Skinner says environmental influence Absolutely. is very strong. And you can yeah. see this, this, the spectrum of influences that come from the environment. You know, you can be influenced in so many ways. And that's what uh, we want to impress at this moment of time. Upon what you. about values? You know, values that we practice at home. My beliefs. Conventional right? values. Right, right. Or the, right. Culture, cu- culture. the culture of my, my society, perhaps my upbringing, or the organization's culture. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. right. So and of these course, play? there is genetics, mm-hmm. definitely, mm-hmm. it does play a part. Mm-hmm. Um, going back to um, our great friend, uh, Carl, Carl Gustav Gustav Jung. Yeah. and uh, there is also something called ethics. Ah. You know, because these are the do's and don'ts, the norms, the society lays down, or the organization lays down, or the family lays down, right. that this is allowed, this is not allowed, this right. is okay, this is not okay. Right and wrong. Right and wrong. Yeah, yeah. So those ethical principles or ethical uh, conditioning mm-hmm, mm-hmm. also influences human behavior. And of course, we spoke about the authority, definitely. Right. We gave a lot of examples. Right, right. Yes. But now, there is this, you know, because on one hand, we spoke about nature, mm-hmm. which is uh, based on Carl Jung, mm-hmm. heredity, genetics, genetics and things yeah, like that. Right. Then uh, we are talking about a nurture mm-hmm. based on the environmental yeah. conditioning. How, how, it's what, uh, been, how you've been trained to behave, how you've what been Skinner influenced. is talking about. Absolutely. So Absolutely. can we explain what is this nature and nurture? Absolutely, right? So the, the use of the terms nature and nurture yeah. used to represent the roles of heredity on and the en- yeah, on one side and the environment in a human development. Okay. Right? And as a, as a child grows. As, as the child grows. And both can be traced back to 13th century France. Wow, 13th right. century. Yeah. Today we're in the 21st century. Absolutely. So wow. this is uh, hundreds of years in the making. So so many scientists have worked on that. Mm-hmm. But what is interesting mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. some scientists think that people behave as they do according to genetic predisposition. That means genetically programmed. It's an embedded system. Right. 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 Or even animal instincts. Right. So you say that hey, this person is so and so like this. Mm. And you will always refer to an animal. Absolutely. So, I mean, these are drives from within. Right? Yeah. Why so, animal like instincts. That? Absolutely. So, that is known as the nature theory. Nature theory. theory right. Yeah. And on the other hand, if you look, other scientists believe that people think and behave yes. in certain ways because they are taught to do so. Absolutely. I'm taught by my teachers, you know. Uh, ma- ma- manners have been instilled in me in school at a young age or perhaps so my people, parents. People also catch the behaviors right, right. of what you know, right. my role model Caught and, and taught. Caught, caught and taught. And, taught right? and this is known as the na- the nurture yeah. uh, theory of behavior. But that brings us to a very universal question. Mm. The universal question is hey, when you say nature and nurture, are we born that way? Or are we made that way? You know, that's a very important point. Right. Are we born that way? Are you born that way? Or are you made that way? Right. Right. Now let's look at um, the fast growing understanding mm. Mm. of the human genetics or human yeah. genome. Right. Right. Has recently made it clear that both sides are partly right. That means the nature theorists are right. Yeah. The nurture theorists are, are also right. right. That so, means we talk about heredity and right. the environmental right. influence. Both are both play a big role absolutely. In, in shaping yeah. you, right? So nurture, nature endows us with these inborn abilities. Yes. You, know, you do have these tendencies and traits that come up from genetics. Yes. Right. And nurture takes these genetic characteristics and tendencies and molds them as we learn, oh, as wonderful. we mature. Wonderful. You know? wonderful. So now, see, look at this. Environmental influence is very, very strong mm. on people because they are going through that situation right, right. day in and day out. Different set of environmental conditioning brings out varied behaviors or different behaviors from uh, 
uh, individuals yeah, in individual, or people, right? Absolutely. So when the environmental conditioning changes, the behavior also is likely to change. That's why we always say that as a parent, you are responsible to create a positive environment at home. Right. As a boss, as a manager, you are responsible to create a conducive work environment. Right. If you want perform- performance to happen or productivity to happen. Absolutely. And yeah. this is backed by years of research because this this view stems from the research by determinists and environmental psychologists. So. we do need to pay attention absolutely now this is not just uh, manu varki and srinidhi talking to you about uh, behavior environmental influences but this view stems from years of mm-hmm. research so you are going to get um, deep insight into why environmental influences are strong and what you and me can do about mm-hmm. there right. is this uh, bpa assessment right bpa stands for behavior pattern analysis lovely It is based on the essential belief mm-hmm. that our behavior your behavior my behavior people's behavior right. is influenced by the environment we are in mm-hmm. right that we encounter day in and day out right. and that our behavioral aspects originate from the environmental factors of our upbringing and experience you know we are growing up we are picking up behaviors we are watching we are learning wonderful and we are also experiencing it and that experience actually further consolidate consolidifies the right. our behavior that's a, that's a wonderful you know tie up of of where we're going with the with the bp assessment absolutely. right so you have you've taken the assessment you've got the the score sheet in front of you as we move forward we are going to take a look at how the environment has shaped you you know where is it uh, where is it led you to and what does this mean